factory, they had a very small turbocharger, no intercooler, so when the turbo gets hot... Hey, this is Matt from Budget Boosting. Today we're going to talk about engines, engines broken down, and their piece parts that make up the engine. Now here on display we have a completely torn down Buick 4.1 V6. This was a junkyard engine I recently acquired. This is going to be the next monster engine for my Buick Grand National. Because unlike the 3.8 V6, which is identical to the 4.1 V6, the difference is it's got more displacement. This is 3.8, this is 4.1. And the biggest difference between these engines, it's got a bigger piston and more bore to give it that extra cubic inches to make that extra power on boost. Okay, this junkyard engine, the first step is basically when you get a junkyard engine, you want to tear it all the way down and see what you got to work with. So far what I've seen is the engine pretty much needs a lot of new parts, but as a whole it's a great foundation to build. I've seen no major problems with the engine. It's a great engine. This is going to be my next monster Buick engine. Doesn't look like a whole heck of a lot right now, but it will be. So since this engine's torn down, I'm going to talk about basic components of the engine. I have a pretty much, I have a total assembled long block right here. A long block is what an engine is called when you've got the complete block and heads assembled. That's a long block assembly. A short block assembly is everything you see here without the heads. That's a short block assembly. Right here is a completely torn down engine. And these engines are the same engine essentially. They look exactly the same. The only exception is the bore, which you can't tell unless you had the pistons side by side. So, speaking wise, you can see what the difference is with an engine completely torn down and an engine completely built to a long block assembly. Block and heads ready to start taking everything from your engine that's in your car to this engine to put it in. Alright, well I'm going to talk about some components. I'm going to show you on the engine right here since it's assembled, show you these components and I'll show them to you off the engine. Alright, here's your head, head assembly. This is your exhaust port, where your exhaust comes out of your engine. This is your exhaust valve spring, rocker arm, and the push rod is right here. These are push rods. It basically goes from the can to the lifter, the push rod, actuates the rocker arm, opens your valve, and that's how your exhaust valve opens up to let your exhaust out. And the same goes with your intake port. Here's the intake port. Got the intake port. Has its own push rod. Has its own lifter. Has its own camshaft lobe. The camshaft lobe lifts up, pushes up on this lifter, pushes the rocker arm, actuates the uh, rocker arm, compresses the valve spring, opens the valve, and you get your intake charge in your engine. So you're looking at a long block assembly, you got your intakes, your push rods, your lifters, your camshaft. Crankshaft is underneath, you can't see it, but you can see a little bit of the camshaft in here, inside that little hole. You can see a lobe in the camshaft. And that lobe pushes up on the lifter, pushes the push rod, actuates the rocker arm, compresses the valve spring, opens the valve. That's how she works. Here's your timing chain. This makes sure complete alignment of your camshaft and your crankshaft at all times. They are completely timed together. This gear here drives your distributor or your cam position sensor and also drives your mechanical fuel pump if you have a mechanical fuel pump. If you have an electric fuel pump, this doesn't drive anything except your distributor or your cam position sensor. This here is your turbo oil return line. Your turbo has a inline, 
and a return line which goes back to the top of the block goes right back to the lifter galley. Okay, this is the intake manifold gasket. Okay, I showed you some parts. Here are the rocker arms. Here's the rocker arms disassembled from the uh, junkyard engine that I just disassembled. They're really dirty, but you can get the picture. You can see them. Here's a push rod from the disassembled engine. Push rod goes right here, and they actuate. And the push rod is connected to the lifter right here. And the lifter is actuated by the cam lobe right here. See? Think of it disassembled. Cam turns, pushes on push rod and lifter, and actuates rocker arm. That's how they work. There's your head disassembled, your valve spring, exhaust valve, intake valve, a water port. Here's your exhaust valve, or your intake valve, your exhaust valve, and spark plug. So exhaust valve, I mean intake valve, exhaust valve, spark plug, combustion chamber. This is the surface where your head gasket goes right here. And it mounts to the block right here. Your head gasket goes right here between this and that surface of the head I showed you. Here's a cylinder bore. Look inside here. This is a cylinder bore without the piston there. And this is your lifter valley without the lifters in place. See all the lifter valleys? That's where the lifters go. And I showed you a lifter out, and I showed you a lifter in. Here's where your camshaft goes, right here. And I'll show you how it goes in quickly. Since there's no lifters, the camshaft goes in very easily. You slowly run it through the camshaft bearings, and you slowly run it through each bearing, and turn it as you go. So you get it all the way in. That's how you install a camshaft, just quick like. Then you put the lifters in, and then you start assembling the rest of your engine. Here comes the camshaft again. Take it out. Camshaft. Timing chain. Now it's here on the camshaft. And it goes here on the crankshaft. And you see it over here too. Camshaft, crankshaft, timing chain. And I could show it to you externally as well with the engine totally disassembled. This part goes right here. There you go. That's how they look. Assembled and disassembled. Timing chain, cam, and crank. Every time the crank turns two times, the cam turns once. So a two to one ratio on the crank versus the cam. The crank will turn two times for every one turn of the camshaft. And these are head bolts. One head bolt, and another head bolt. Head bolts, which hold the heads to your block.
Here is the harmonic balancer or your crank pulley. This is your crank pulley bolt. It goes on the crankshaft by way of this keyway. Line the keyway with the keyway and install it. Then you put the bolt in, tighten it down. Same goes on this engine. There's the keyway, the keyway, line them up, put them on, bolt it in. And this crank pulley is the driver of all your accessories. Alternator, air conditioning, power steering, all are driven by the crankshaft by way of the crank pulley and harmonic balancer assembly mounted directly to the crankshaft of the engine. Now we'll talk about pistons and connecting rods. Okay, I'll give you a comparison here. We got three pistons right here. This is a piston for an RB26 Nissan engine out of a 1991 Nissan Skyline GTR. This is a forged racing piston made by HKS. 2.6 liters, 2600 cc's. This is an L26 from a 1974 Nissan Datsun 260Z connecting rod and piston assembly. 2.6 with a short stroke, 2.6 with a longer stroke. You can see the differences in piston sizes. This has a larger bore. The RB26 has a larger bore than the L26. But the L26 has a longer stroke. I don't have a con rod from an RB26 to compare, but it has a much shorter stroke than that of the RB. Now here's the piston from the Buick 4.1. 4,100 cc's versus 2,600 cc's. See the difference in the stroke and the bore. The stroke, how far the piston goes up and down. The bore, how big a rounded diameter the pistons are. This totally dwarfs this piston. 4.1 V6, 2.6 straight 6. Wow, look at these differences. And the piston, number one would be right here. So it would go under and in and make with this bore right here. This is the top of the piston and you'd see it right here on this engine if it was installed. And it's a dished piston. See the recesses inside? This is a dished piston. Good for extra room for boost. So dished pistons are best for turbo charging applications or low compression applications. If you want to run an engine on low octane fuel, having this extra room for lowering the compression gives you that potential. Having a dished piston is very, very advantageous for a turbo engine, it gives you room for all this boost. So on your intake stroke, you get lots of boosted air, plus air drawn in and forced in, all that extra room in the piston and the bore for that much extra cc's or extra displacement to be stored and compressed. And when the fuel air mixture hits it and the spark hits, explosion. And this in turn, is connected to the connecting rod, in turn connected to the rod bearing on the crankshaft by way of this. Here's your rod bolts. Take those guys out. Rod bolt. Another rod bolt. Rod bearings, inside is the rod bearings. And you connect them right here, like so. And that's how a piston and rod gets attached to the crankshaft. 
These are freeze plugs. These go on the sides of the block right here. That's a freeze plug. This allows the cooling channels in the engine, you have cooling channels. And there's cooling channels between the bores. And these are direct access points into your cooling channels. And these are areas that you can change every time you rebuild or if it's necessary to change. You have to punch them out with a, a punch and a hammer, get them out, and press new ones in. These are very important because if they go bad, they can pop out of your engine and leak and cause cooling leaks. Because this is essential to keeping your engine block and your heads cool. Or a lot cooler than if you didn't have them. Here's where the crankshaft goes. I'll disconnect this connecting rod here and let you see how the crank is installed. Okay. Got the crankshaft out of this engine. And I'm going to show you how it goes in an engine. You carefully lower the crankshaft. To the block. And that's how it fits inside. Just like that. And the crankshaft is mounted to the blocks by mains and main bearings. I'm just going to show you one. This is the first main bearing. And it holds the crank by way of main bearings, and this is part of the main bearing on the crank, main bearing of the mount. Main bearing mount, it goes flush with this, and it's held in by main bolts. And I'll show you what it looks like totally assembled on this engine. Okay, this is how it looks assembled. These are ARP studs and nuts holding these mains on. These were held on by stock bolts. But you can see, here's what it looks like when all your crank and rods are installed. Crankshaft, timing chain, main bearings, main bearing bolts and nuts, piston number one, Two, three, four, five, five and six, or five and six. One, three, five, two, four, six. That's the connecting rods that go to the pistons, just like this. The top of the connecting rod, where it mounts. This is what it looks like installed in the engine, with the heads on and everything. On this engine, all the main mounts would go on. Then you'd put your connecting rods in one at a time and your pistons with a piston ring compressor. Compress the rings. Compress your rings with a ring compressor. Take this part off of the rod, push it up, and connect it. And close this on this, the rod bearing and the connecting rod. And that's how you assemble an engine. Of course, very specific torques. And you check your measurements every time with what's called plastic gauge. You lay plastic gauge down, lay plastic gauge, compress, torque, and then measure how far your plastic gauge goes. And that's your clearance. And you check it with the book to make sure you're within the perimeters of minimum bearing clearance to maximum bearing clearance. If you're right in the middle, below the max, above the minimum, you're set then you can assemble each one at a time and do that step for each connecting rod and each time the crank is put in to the mains you also have to make that measurement as well. That's how a head 
gets set in. That's what the head looks like when you set it on. You put your head bolts in, you torque them, and that's what they look like. Lifter. Lifter goes, there's the flat edge, which goes against the cam. That goes in. This is a hydraulic lifter. It has a little bit of play. Lifter, lifter valley, push rod on lifter, lifter to rocker arm. Actuates it. Pushes in the valve, releases the valve. Basics. We have the timing cover. On this Buick engine, the timing cover also has the water pump mounted to it, which the water pump is spun by your accessories. See? They spin. Timing cover goes right over the timing chain. This is your front main seal, which keeps oil that's used to lubricate the engine and the timing chain from coming out of your harmonic balancer or crank pulley, which is not good. This is how a timing cover goes on. Of course, your timing chain, crank cam, and everything's installed. Put her in. That's where it goes. Just like that. We're on an assembled engine. It'll go like that. That's your timing cover. Here's where your oil filter goes. This is your oil pump. The oil pump is driven by a shaft that's driven by this gear right here. There's the shaft, which drives your cam position sensor or distributor. And this also drives your oil pump to pump oil throughout your whole engine. Well, I hope you enjoyed. And thank you for watching Mad Mad at Budget Boosting. If you like us, like us on Facebook, like us on YouTube, subscribe to our channels, and look at our Budget Boosting website, budgetboosting.com. And our window stickers, which are coming really soon. And if we get a really popular demand, we're looking forward to selling them to you. $20, buy it now auctions, free shipping on eBay. And remember, knowledge is power. It's horsepower. Let him pump three times and hold. One more time. And hold. You'll feel the pedal kind of move. We'll verify that just fluid came out, which it did. Pump it again.